So I will start with the analysis of the um, momentum part of the Hamiltonian, and then I will make the calculation for the potential part. So I start with the, uh, yeah. I start with the uh, kinetic term. So this is the um, expression that we have used and P in the new representation is a summation over k and s we have the normalization factor then we have p k s the polarization vectors and the phase so if we include into this uh, summation this expression for p we have a summation over R of 1 divided by 2M. Then we have P times P. And for the two P's, let's say, I will use different indexes. So KS for one P, K prime S prime for the other P. So the summation is over KS, K prime, S prime. So I have P, K, S, E, K, S, and the phase, and then P, K prime, S prime, E, K prime, S prime, and the, uh, the phase. In this case, if you consider these two phases, uh, sorry, and then I have the um, one divided by N factor, that is the product of the two square roots of n that you have for each of the p operators if you consider these two phases they are the only thing within the summation that depends on the coordinate so if you group those two phases you have e to the i k sorry you have i k plus k prime times r so if you sum up over R for all the values of the coordinate R, then this is equal. So the summation over R of this part here is equal to N times delta K minus K prime. So this, the presence of this phase introduces, um, yeah. A limit a limitation concerning this double summation double summation over uh, k and k prime so at the end we have just one summation over k the summation over r, r disappears because we have used that to obtain the Kronecker delta and then we have the summation over s and s prime so we have p of minus k s then we have p of k s prime now i take the vectors on one side so i have e k s times e sorry e in principle this should be e minus k s but the solution of the problem are even so e minus k s is equal to e k s and then i have e k prime sorry e k s prime in if you consider this product here this is this is the scalar product between one vector one polarization vector corresponding to wave vector k and index s and another polarization vector corresponding to the same wave vector but with index s prime as we are able to fix the three polarization vectors corresponding to the same wave vector so that they are orthogonal with each other this product here gives us a Kronecker delta delta s s prime because we have the two in the two indexes s and s prime has to be equal for this color product to be different from zero so we end up with one divided by two m summation over k and s 
of p minus k s p k s and due to the fact that the uh, due to the condition that we applied before that the uh, momentum operator has to be self-adjoint then this is also equal to the summation over k and s of p cross k s p k s so uh, we just exploit here the uh, the relationship that was found before you uh, when we apply the constraint concerning the um, the fact that p and u has to be have to be self adjoint so in this case we may see may write here just to summarize that the summation over uh, p so the kinetic contribution to the total energy is is equal to uh, this part or in an equivalent way also to this part so we have these two expressions concerning the application of p now what happens if we make the same substitution concerning um, the uh, potential contribution so the summation over r and r prime of u of r d r minus r prime times u of r prime in this case we use exactly the same substitution but we inject the uh, representation the fourier representation of the displacement operator so in this case we have the summation over r and r prime then we have k and k prime s and s prime u of r and then i have also the one divided by n factor due to the two square roots that i have for u of r and u of r prime so in this case i have q k s polarization vector e k s then i have the phase e k times r then we have the dynamical matrix no sorry not the dynamical matrix the d matrix then q k prime s prime e k prime s prime and then i have the phase k prime times r Th uh, sorry times r prime in this case i may not exploit the um, um what i did before because i have not an index of summation that is not that doesn't involve the dynamical matrix so in this case you may multiply and divide this summation by this factor e to the i k prime r e to, and so you may multiply by that and then multiply by e to the minus i k prime r so you just add and multiply and divide by the um, same coefficient in this case you may join this phase and this phase and then you may also join this phase and this phase if you join them what you have in at the end is the following so we have one half summation over r r prime k k prime s s prime one divided by n i have q k s then e k s d of r minus r prime q k prime s prime then i have e k prime s prime then here i have e to the i i may collect r and then i have k plus k prime using this one here and the other one here then using the other two i have e to the i k 
k prime r prime minus r. Now, <clears throat> I may change variables of summation and I may define r minus r prime to be equal to r second. So if I do that, here I have r second and here I have r second. Um, if you notice, here I have, uh, I'm sorry, if here I have minus r second in this phase because I have r prime minus r. If you notice, this is the definition of dynamical matrix. So this part here and this phase here, once you change the variable of summation from r minus r prime to r second, you have d of r second times e to the minus i k prime r second. So this is the definition of dynamical matrix. So the summation at this point, you switch from summing up, summing up over r and r prime to summing up over r and r second. The sum, so the summation over r second gives you the dynamical matrix. The summation over r involves only this phase. So the summation over r at this point involves only this phase here. So the summation of that gives you a Kronecker delta k minus k prime. So I know I made two steps in the same calculation, but so at the end, the uh, difference between k and k prime disappears, and both summation over r and r second disappear. The first one because we introduced the Kronecker delta, the second one because we have the dynamical matrix. So the, the following step, is the following. So we have one half, oops. We have one half, then we have the summation over K, S and S prime. I have Q minus K, S, then E minus K, S, but this is equal to E, K, S. Then I have the dynamical matrix D of K, then E, K, S prime, Q, K, S, uh, S prime. Um, as the E vectors are the E vectors that are eigenvectors of the dynamical matrix, if you apply D, K to E, K, S prime, you have the corresponding eigenvalue. So this is equal to one half summation over K, S and S prime of Q minus K, S, E, K, S. In place of DK, I write the corresponding eigenvalue, lambda K, S prime, E, K, S prime, Q, K, S prime. Now, this is just the number at this point. So you have the scalar product between EKS and EKS prime. And this gives us a delta SS prime as we observed before. So at the end, you may drop also the, summa the double summation over S and S prime, and you have just the summation over, um, over S. So you have one half summation over K and S. So we have Q minus K S, Q K S, then lambda K S is equal to um, M squared omega squared K S. In, an, in a different way, you may also write this as one half summation over K and S of Q cross K S Q, K, S, M square, omega square, K, sorry, 
and mega square of s k. At this point, if you sum the, um, say, if you join the two terms and you build, rebuild up the uh, initial Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian operator, then you have that a, the full age is equal to um, <clears throat> a summation over k and s of you have p minus k s p k s divided by twice the uh, ionic mass plus one half m squared omega square of s depending on k q minus k s q k s so the final point is that <clears throat> the initial problem that was not diagonal is now when we move to the Fourier space written in a di diagonal way since you have a summation over all the possible degrees of freedom of the system so over all possible wave vectors and over all possible polarization values of something that resembles let's say this recalls may recall in your mind the um, hamiltonian that you had for an harmonic oscillator in that case you have p and x in the real space not p and q in the fourier space but here you have the square of the momentum uh, divided by twice the mass, and then you have one half m squared omega square of k, and the product of these two called of the let's say in brackets the equivalence of the um, position coordinates. So at this point, it is possible to make a change of variables to to have a more compact expression for the Hamiltonian, and if you make this change of variables that were q k s is equal to uh, i just define a, co a coefficient here l k s is equal to h bar divided by m omega s of k to the power of one half so if you define l l k s in this way then you have that if you define q as l k s divided by the square root of two times a new operator b cross minus k s plus b k s and you define p of minus k s as i h bar divided by L K S one divided by the square root of two times P cross minus K S minus B K S. So by making this change of coordinates, then the Hamiltonian can be written in this way h bar omega s of k p cross k b k plus one half if you remember when we um, um, discussed the the um in um when i presented to you the second quantization applied to um electrons i told you that in case you had a creation operator times the corresponding destruction operator then this product here is the is an operator that tells you that in that case in the case of electrons uh, was able to tell us what the what was the number of electrons uh, sorry i forgot the s and the s here so in the case of electrons we saw that um 
in that case c cross k c cross ck for electrons so these two the product of these two operators gave us the number of particle operators so in that case for electrons c cross k ck applied to the state of the system was able to give back to us the total number of electrons corresponding to that specific level in the Fourier space. Here we have again, we have a similar expression because we have a product of the <clears throat> adjoint of an operator times the same operator. In this case, what is the, um, let's say, uh, the operator acts to on which kind of levels, on which basis? In this case, the basis where the operators are acting on is the basis of the oscillations. So K and S are the indexes that represent a possible normal mode of the system, or in other words, a possible oscillation that the system may display. So <clears throat> these two operators, B and B cross, act on the, uh, let's say, on the space where we have, on the levels, let's say, that we use to represent the normal modes of the system or the possible oscillations of the system. So due to that, for analogy, for with what we saw with the electrons, you may consider that BKS is the equivalent of the distraction operator that we observed with electrons, but in this case, the distraction is not performed on the electronic levels. Is in this case, the distraction is applied on the oscillation levels. So in this case, we have the distraction operator applied to level to the normal mode with index K and S. On the other side, B cross KS is the corresponding creation operator that creates an oscillation with wave vector k and polarization s in this picture so in this picture where the <clears throat> b cross ks and bk ks create create and destroy oscillations <clears throat> in the system so to use um, a language that expresses this that um, is in favor of this process in general what one does not say I am destroying or I am creating an oscillation because the process here is a sort of <clears throat> quantization of the oscillation field. So these operators here destroy and create, excite, let's say, excite and destroy, sorry, may produce excitations within this oscillation field. And the possible excitations of the oscillation fields using a quantum mechanical language are called the phonons. So the equivalent of what was called oscillate normal mode of oscillation in the, let's say, classical representation of this problem is phonon in the quantum mechanical representation where we let's say use the oscillation field that was initially described by you switch to the fourier representation of that field and then define two operators that create or destroy possible excitation of the oscillation field so let, we may consider that the phonons are excitations of the oscillation field of the ions, of the, of the ions, of the lattice, let's say. So in this picture, B cross KS, B BKS tells us what is the number of phonons of excitations in the system corresponding to index K, to wave vector K, and polarization equal to S. So in another, we may rewrite this as a sum of Ks, h bar omega s of k times n k s 
operator plus one half. And this is very, very similar, apart from a couple of symbols, to the representation of the energy of the quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator. In that case, you had h bar omega times an integer plus one half. So one half was there for the zero point oscillation. And then you had the possible excitation of that system. So in this new picture, <clears throat> You may consider that the lattice is a combination of quantum mechanical of harmonic oscillators. Each oscillator may have an energy that depends on the excitation on the, of that oscillator. So each oscillator here is, is described by two indexes. One index is chi, the other index is s. So we have a total number of three n harmonic oscillators. Each of those oscillators may be excited or not, depending on the conditions where we have the system. And so the total energy of the system can be obtained by applying this new expression for the Hamiltonian to the actual oscillation state of the system. If you remember, when we discussed the um, creation and destruction operators, and in particular, the number of electrons operators for electrons, so for fermions, we say, I told you that if you apply nk to a possible state of the system, and in that case we had the Fermi surface, the Fermi sphere, then the result of the application of the number of electrons operator was given by the Fermi direct distribution. In this case, we are not discussing about fermions so we are not discussing about the electrons we are discussing about phonons and the phonons it can be seen that are bosons not fermions so the population of the phonons so the population of these bosonic excitations is not described by the fermi Dirac distribution but is described by the Bose-Einstein distribution function so the equivalent sorry when we apply the number of phonons operator to the actual oscillation state of the system, the expectation value that we have for that operator is again given by a distribution function, but in this case, we have the Bose-Einstein distribution function evaluated at the energy or of the corresponding harmonic oscillator of the corresponding phonon. So h bar omega s of k. So in the, uh, let's say, in the equations, we will replace, sorry, the result of the application of NKS will be given by, sorry, one divided by the exponential of H bar omega S of K divided by KBT minus one. So, this is, let's say, this one here is the general expression for the Hamiltonian in case we switch from the oscillation, from the normal mode of oscillation representation to the phonon representation. And, and this is still an operator. So we have, keep, we have kept the, we are always at the operator level we have just rewritten the expression of the Hamiltonian, but we have also always uh, at disposal an operator. If you want to obtain the total energy of the system, you have, to, you have to find the expectation value of that operator over the oscillation state of the system. And if you do this, you may replace this NKS uh, with the Bose-Einstein distribution function. So at the end, if we want to obtain the um, energy of the system, what we may do is to sum up over A and S, H bar omega S of K times one half plus
So this is the energy value, the overall energy of the system when the temperature is T. Here, I should also add U0 because U0 was the constant term that was there due to the due to the fact that we wrote the Hamiltonian as a perturbation of the static lattice Hamiltonian. So this is what remains there, um, say due to the static lattice, and this is what is found due to the uh, dynamical contribution uh, that is related to the um, oscillation of the ions. So let's say this is the full expression of the total energy from yeah from now on i will let's say neglect the u0 just due to the fact that i will concentrate on the for instance regarding the specific heat uh, i will concentrate on the temperature dependence of the energy because i need that to evaluate the specific heat so i will both neglect uh, U0, because U0 has no temperature dependence, I will also neglect one half because uh, if you split this sum into two pieces, the sum where you have just the one half term does not depend on temperature. So the only term that changes with temperature is the one re where we have the Bose Einstein distribution function. Just to yeah, it's more, more or less 11. So I make just the last step, then I stop. Just to see that even if you have a more complex expression, then at least the long MPT result is still there. The total energy, let's say, what is the total energy in the um, height in the high temperature limit? We know that in the high temperature limit, the specific heat uh, uh, is constant, so it doesn't depend on temperature, or if there is a dependence, is very, very uh, weak. So in, this, in that case, we have U0, then we have the summation over K and S of H bar omega S of K times one half, then I have the summation over K and S of H bar omega S of K and the Bose-Einstein contribution. Yeah. Then U0, I have here the constant terms that doesn't depend on temperature. Then I have plus a summation over K and S of H bar omega S of K. Then I have <coughs> here the exponential of the ratio between H bar omega S of K and KBT. If T, let's say, please, um, let's say in Italian, I would say prendete con le pinze. In English, I don't know how to translate, but please keep this not as a, as actually the temperature goes to infinity, but as if the temperature was very high. <clears throat> that means that KBT is larger and larger with respect to H bar omega s of k so in this limit uh, we have that here we have uh, a ratio between two quantities and this ratio is small so i may write not the say in place of the exponential i may write just an approximation of the exponential and in general when you have the exponential of something and that something is close to zero this is equal to one plus that something. So the exponential of x is close to one plus x when x is close to zero. So I multiply by one plus h bar omega s 
of k divided by kbt minus 1. Minus 1 and plus 1 can be simply uh, eliminated. Then you have that h bar omega s of k and h bar omega s of k can be eliminated. So you have just kbt left for the summation. So this is equal to the constant terms plus summation over k and s of kbt. Since kbt does not depend on k on s, we have the same quantity summed up a number of times that is equal to the number of k values times the number of s values. So we have 3n times the same thing. So we have 3n kbt. So if the total energy <clears throat> depends on a constant term plus 3n kbt, then CV that again is the um, time temperature derivative of the energy density. The constant term disappears from the derivative because it doesn't depend on temperature. And then we have again 3nr. So we have the classical result there. So this formalism gives us the um, high temperature result as was obtained by Dulong and Petit. So in the classical limit, let's say, we, re, um, we find the classical result. And what is the meaning of classical limit in this picture? Please keep in mind this condition. If KBT is larger and larger with respect to um, <clears throat> H bar omega S, this means that the thermal energy is larger with respect to the energy that is required to excite any phonon in the system. So all the phonons are active in the system. So all the possible oscillations that can be displayed by your crystal are activated. So this is the equivalent in the before summation, in the summation that I made in the classical limit to write 3n for what concerns the possible degrees of freedom because you actually have that all those degrees of freedom are activated so in this case we may expect that when we change the temperature and the temperature goes down to goes down to zero at that point we may expect that the uh, phononic population will not include all the possible phonons but we, we may expect that the high energy phonons may not be active in the system. So we may expect that the uh, possible oscillation modes are not, all, not all of them are active, but just a group of them. So due to that, we may expect that possibly the total energy of the system may decrease uh, and the, the specific heat may decrease uh, um, accordingly. But let's say, uh, I will keep the suspense about that and we will see the calculation in 10 days i think yeah next week next next friday uh okay so um yeah um okay um do you have 